It's not about picking stocks. It's about picking the right portfolio. Interesting comment from Steiner today on housing, and they're doing, I think, next week a deep, you know, their quarterly deep dive, but so d demand on housing, which we know has been weak, is, is sort of back to the levels when they took the tax credit off in 2009. But what's different this cycle, um, back then inventory was at 12 months, mm -hmm. inventory now is at three months. So you have really low inventory. We have this rate dynamic that you've been talking about where, you know, the 10 years, you know, making new lows. You know, ITB obviously been a great performer, probably not the place to buy it. But I put all that together, I'm thinking, on the fundamental side anyway, interesting case for, for housing, but it's probably a thought that gets me chasing as well. Yeah. And, and um, not, nothing I said is necessarily new, except for the 10 year uh, breaking lower. Which yeah, and the machine chasing anything that's inversely correlated to yeah. that. So yeah. now the difference between ITB and XLRE X is that ITB did go to bullish trend. Yeah. Uh, the other thing with ITB is that it has non, like you're not buying housing, you're buying something like Home Depot or Lowe's, which were, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which were also short. So yeah. I mean, so that yeah. one, you know, for me, at a big lower high versus its all-time high, which is it's what it's doing, one, you wouldn't chase it because it's near the top end of the range. Two, yeah. it's been highly correlated to interest rates. And three, what Steiner didn't mention, uh, which you would if you asked him the follow-on question, which I didn't either because we were moving on on the call, was doesn't housing works, it's, it's like a one-factor model. Yeah. Interest rates go down, housing works, okay? X, one economic condition or scenario. What would that be? A recession. You lose your job, you can't buy a car, you can't buy a house. Yeah. That was the other part of the call. McGough and McLean did a very good job outlining a whole bunch of these auto-related shorts. And that's the conclusion. I also put this in an early look, uh, or in a, in a real-time alert. I forget which one it was, but I mean, for those of you that subscribe to the whole process, again, thank you. And thank yourself, because you've taken for 30 bucks a month or whatever the hell it is, incrementally, you're, you, you've actually get ongoing real-time in-game coaching on these real-time alerts, which I'm way better at than I ever was before, and the bar, the bar was pretty low. All right, because um, I, didn't, I didn't get it. I didn't get that people don't get the game at all. Uh, and now I get that a lot of people get it, and a lot of people still don't get the game at all. So in-game, what did I say? In one of the real-time alerts, in the coaching alert, it said, what happens when you're, do you actually understand what happens when you're entering an economic recession? Fundamentally, do you understand what happens? Lose your job, you're not buying a new house or a car or a used one. You understand that? I think you probably understand that. But do you understand it when you're looking at the screen, emotionally triggered by stocks going up and down or CNBC, the clown, uh, clown show network, you know, basically you know, parading around or peacocking like nothing's going down. Uh, by the way, watch what GES does today. You don't have to guess, GES, down 15% pre-open. Um, so one, do you actually understand what's coming down the pike here in the next three to six months from an economic perspective and what the impacts are, what the companies are gonna say? And two, most importantly, have you ever done that before? And have you done it accurately? Like there, no, almost no one can answer yet, yes to that question. So you have no experience with that. So what? Why would you trust a 50-day moving monkey instead? Well, maybe that's the answer. Yeah. They prefer to trust short-term price momentum than uh, what will be the intermediate-term trend. This is exactly what happened in July, but at a much more gross and broad, broadened level because people were chasing a lot more things back then. Because that back then, if you recall, the point was it's a broadening rally. You got to chase it. Uh, because interest rates are going up, that's a sign of economic health. Now it's like you got to chase all this because it's a sign of uh, not economic health, but let's go with the next narrative. Uh, well, the next narrative is be very careful anytime you're at the top end of the range, especially when you're going into a recession. Hey there, Hedgeye Nation, or if you're not part of Hedgeye Nation, thanks for watching Hedgeye on YouTube. If you haven't already, make sure to click on the button below there. Subscribe to our YouTube page. You can also follow the link in the description to our website to get even more great investing content.